This is a male desert horn lizard and he was sent to me as a rescue from the pet trade and uh, like most of them that are sent to me uh, are he was in pretty bad shape emaciated and a lot of times they're in, uh, in an immunocompromised state and are uh, ill uh, laden with parasites usually have some kind of uh, uh, bacterial infection or viral infection these lizards just generally don't uh, suffer captivity very well especially uh, from the uh, vendors that uh, uh, frequent these uh, uh, reptile shows where they're uh, normally uh, peddling uh, these guys uh, as uh, well they're uh, they're wild caught animals and so they they will keep them in uh, 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 much less uh, than optimal uh, conditions uh, and a lot of these vendors travel the roads uh, going from show to show and that's really not good for uh, any kind of longevity of a horn lizard but uh, anyway what I'm showing you here is that this little fella um, had been suffering from uh, various ailments uh, and um, uh, most recently he was suffering from nephritis which is a uh, kidney inflammation in his uh, left kidney here which I treated and the uh, uh, palpable uh, mass of the kidney uh, reduced by about 50 percent on the, the treatments I was giving him which included uh, some herbals and uh, uh, other natural substances about 45 minutes ago he seized up on me and um, ceased respiration and there was also no visible heartbeat he was uh, pretty much unresponsive and uh, I do perform CPR on my rescue animals my lizards, snakes, turtles um, I, I have a procedure for that I, uh, I will intubate them just like you would with, uh, with a, a human being and uh, what I use for that is uh, I'll I'll take a little uh, like this is a, a little metal syringe tip here very tiny or I'll take the the tip from an uh, like a vet bond surgical glue uh, applicator very tiny plastic applicator tip uh, and it'll also fit on the end of a 1cc a uh, syringe tube as this one is and that has to be inserted into their glottis which is the uh, well the opening to the trachea which is right on top of the tongue and uh, what I do is insert it there and then uh, through the tube here I will blow or I'll uh, intubate them with a, a 3.5 French uh, 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 neonatal uh, feeding catheter works well but uh, off and on I'd been giving this guy uh, CPR uh, light uh, what I call uh, micro chest compressions um, right here uh, over their uh, sternum their heart is right here uh, just like where it is in uh, you know most animals or uh, people and uh, I gave him a little micro chest compressions and uh, uh, tubed his uh, uh, trachea and gave him rescue breaths and I uh, did that intermittently for about half an hour and uh, I wasn't seeing any signs of, uh, of life it looked like he had expired but I normally give him a lot of time before I uh, give up on them because reptiles uh, they take a long time to die they can take a long time to uh, rehabilitate to respond to treatments uh, to recover even uh, uh, when given CPR but I had just about given up. He was not breathing on his own uh, 30 minutes into it. No, no reflexes uh, on the, uh, the tongue, the eyes, uh, uh, any kind of pinching. Uh, there was no, no reflex at all and no detectable heartbeat. And um, what, what I used to uh, check for heartbeat is a, a 10x magnification jeweler's loop and I'll actually place it over the, the scales of the the breast right where the heart is and I will actually look for the uh, very tiny minute uh, uh, movements of the the scales above the heart and you can actually see the heartbeat and 
particularly if you if you rotate the lizard uh, in the lighting and, and um, you'll get a certain uh, contrast uh, if you uh, if you're standing in a darker area and like you have light coming through a window and if you get the contrast right you can uh, actually very easily see the uh, the heartbeat if you're if you're looking at it like from an oblique angle um, such as this but um, what's remarkable here and what I'm showing you is that uh, I had just about given up on him and uh, it gave him about the last breath and the last chest compression I was going to give him and um, in reptiles one of the last indicators of life is uh, the movement uh, of the uh, the glottis, the uh, the opening on top of the tongue that is the uh, the uh, the opening to the the trachea, their windpipe. And normally, when they're showing no responsiveness uh, anywhere else to uh, pain stimuli, they they won't respond if you uh, you know touch their eyeball or you scrape the roof of their mouth or pinch their tongue but if you look closely if they're still alive uh, a lot of times you can still see uh, tiny uh, movements um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here um, uh, little fluctuations in the um, the skin around the uh, glottis and so I took a look at that through the jeweler's loop and just a, a second or two before I made the decision to, to give up on him, I, I noticed movement there. And so I, I immediately tubed him again and gave him um, uh, larger and uh, more, uh, larger volumes and more rapid uh, rescue breaths. And then I noticed his, uh, his heartbeat uh, came back first. Uh, well, he, he opened his eyes for me, and then he started... Uh, showing some responsiveness in the mouth. He had held that mouth wide open with his tongue sticking out for a better part of the last half hour. And the average person would have just written this lizard off as dead a long time ago. But uh, that's actually not the case with reptiles. Their, their brain can remain conscious and um, uh, for quite some time, even after, you know, uh, uh, there are other organs. Their uh, their heart has stopped. Their respiration has stopped, but their uh, the brain is still going on, and uh, that's because they have a uh, very low metabolism, and their their brains uh, can go a long time uh, oxygen deprived, and uh, so they're uh, able to recover and uh, have signs of life and be conscious uh, far longer than uh, uh, mammals or birds. And uh, that's why also euthanizing reptiles uh, can be a little tricky and it's not so straightforward as it would be for other animals, uh, uh, such as decapitation. That, that, that doesn't quickly kill a reptile. But uh, he, uh, he started regaining his reflexes, uh, opened his eyes, uh, started moving his mouth, and uh, his heartbeat slowly came back. And uh, his heartbeat is now back. And although his breathing is uh, intermittent and um, I consider his condition guarded um, he uh, he is uh, breathing on his own again and uh, typically when they're in this state I will uh, give them additional uh, maintenance breaths in between if their uh, their breathing frequency is uh, not what I think it should be I'll, I'll help them out by uh, tubing them every few minutes and uh, giving them an extra maintenance breath and uh, try to help them along. But this is quite encouraging that um, he was uh, lifeless, no heartbeat, no, re no respiration, um, no response to any stimuli. Um, you know, you could pinch his tongue, uh, poke him in the eyeball, and no sign of life whatsoever, but uh, about uh, half an hour of intermittent uh, rescue breaths and um, chest compressions every few minutes and now he is making quite a turnaround uh, and I actually have uh, a pretty good success rate at resuscitating reptiles uh, I'd say probably 50% of the cases uh, where uh, you know I've caught them uh, 
soon enough after a respiratory failure um, I can turn them around and considering that they're you know little bitty reptiles you know we're, we're talking about CPR on a, a lizard this small it's uh, it's pretty remarkable that uh, in about half the cases I can actually perform CPR and maybe give them some stimulants and uh, revive them uh, now they're uh, usually whatever the condition was that has caused them to go into that uh, respiratory or cardiac arrest to begin with it's um it's usually something that um, um, I, I can't cause them to recover from the treatments I can give them uh, are somewhat limited although it's remarkable what I can do so usually they they will end up succumbing later uh, or sooner rather than later to whatever caused the cardiac or respiratory uh, failure but uh, I would say that perhaps 10 percent of the cases that I revive they they go on to uh, survive for any uh, significant amount of time but uh, hopefully with uh, these treatments um, and actually uh, research here I think this is a lot of new ground I'm breaking here because you know who who does this but um, uh, as uh, as I gain more experience with this I'm, I'm learning more and more and I'm hoping that uh, this round about 10 percent uh, uh, figure I can increase in the future as, as I learn more and uh, maybe more of those that I revive will go on to live uh, in the long term.